Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're answering the question, what are the computer system requirements needed to run Premiere Pro? And hey, if you're not familiar with us, we're all about helping you, the video creator, with templates, footage, tutorials, plugins, audio, and more. In fact, we have tons of free Premiere Pro templates ready to download. I've put a link in the description down below, so make sure to hop over and grab some free stuff. So today we're basically assuming that you want to know either one of two things. Either you have an older computer and you're wondering if it still meets the minimum system requirements to actually run Premiere Pro, or you're planning to buy or build your next computer and you want to know what kind of system parts are going to give you the best possible experience editing in Premiere Pro. We're going to be hitting on both of those. And now we know that there's so much more that goes into a computer, but we're going to be focusing on these four areas in specific. The CPU, the GPU, or the graphics card, RAM, and storage. But before we continue, a quick disclaimer. We're going to be giving you some recommendations for computer parts along the way, but just remember that this is not a tech resource for every part of how to buy or build the perfect system. We're just giving you our personal taste on what we think will work best inside of Premiere Pro specifically, and some helpful hints that can help you to tailor that system to work best for you. But with that out of the way, let's jump right into it with the first on the list, the CPU. The CPU you can think of as sort of the brains of the computer. Think about it like this. Your hands are responsible for activities like writing and typing, but they actually can't do any of that without instructions coming from your brain. And the same goes for your computer. Nothing happens without your CPU's direct or indirect involvement. And for Premiere Pro specifically, where you really see the CPU flexing its muscles is with overall system responsiveness. Things like timeline playback, scrubbing through footage, rendering, exporting, etc. Old documentation for Premiere Pro system requirements states that you need a multi-core processor in order to get Premiere Pro to boot up and run at all, which basically means that you need a CPU with at least two cores, which sounds like something that you need to be really careful to watch out for. But really, even smartphones have been coming up with multi-core processors since early 2012. So you really don't have much to worry about in that department unless your computer looks something like this. So that's the absolute bare minimum that you need, a CPU with at least two processing cores. But what if you're not absolutely flat broke and working with a computer from the dark ages? What sort of CPU will really help you out? Well, if you go by what Adobe says on their website, then you need at least a sixth generation Intel processor or an AMD equivalent, which basically just means a processor from at least August 2015 or newer. But technically, this can be flexible. For example, the CPU in my personal workstation is only a fourth generation Intel from about 2014 but it still runs Premiere Pro just fine. So what gives? Well, basically Adobe knows that computer system parts can get out of date pretty quickly. And if you're gonna be buying or building a new system, you're gonna be spending a lot of money. And it's in their best interest to make sure that their product works great on your system. So what does this mean for you? What kind of a CPU would we personally recommend for you to use with Premiere Pro? Well, let's go with Adobe's recommendation of at least a sixth generation Intel processor or AMD equivalent. Intel and AMD are just the two competing brands within this industry. If you're looking for an Intel processor, you wanna look for names like Skylake, KB Lake, Coffee Lake, or whatever newer comes out after this video. Those are just basically fancy names to tell you the generation of that particular processor. And these names should be easily listed in the description of these products. And if you want to go with AMD, you're probably going to want to stick with their Ryzen lineup exclusively. And their Threadripper subcategory is extremely popular with video editors. But we're going to take it to another level here by helping to relay some information from the guys over at Puget Systems. They've actually tested and scored some of the most commonly used CPUs to see how they perform specifically in Premiere Pro. We'll link to their list of full CPU performance tests, but we're just gonna give you some takeaways quickly. The type of media you use actually makes a substantial difference. So basically, let's break it down into red footage and all other footage. Basically, it looks like AMD has a big advantage when it comes to working with red footage specifically. And Intel has a bit of an advantage when it comes to all other media, but by less of a significant margin. So if you're planning to work with all red footage, that's actually something really important to consider because it looks like AMD is gonna serve you a little bit better in the long run. Now, one of the biggest things that people usually look for in a CPU is the number of processing cores that it has. And you definitely get an increased performance advantage the more processing cores your CPU has inside of Premiere Pro. But here's the thing, you get diminishing returns the higher you go. So the difference between a 16 to an 18 core processor is much smaller of a difference and far less noticeable than the jump between a six to an eight core processor. 
but you get exponentially more expensive the more processing cores that you add on. So you can see how even though you're getting technically a better product the more processing cores you add on, the question of whether or not it's actually worth it really starts to become apparent. You can grab a monster 18 core CPU, but you might end up spending as much on that one part as other people would on their entire system. So to land on a suggestion, if you're planning to do any serious amount of video editing, we would suggest going with no fewer than six processing cores. And as your budget increases, try to look for increased number of cores as well as increased clock speed, which is also listed on every single product that you'll find. For me personally, I'm planning to upgrade my computer in the next year or two, and I'm really seriously considering the i9-9900K from Intel. It's got eight processing cores, and it's really one of those high quality options without actually jumping into the realm of extravagant. But if you wanted to step down your budget just a little bit, there's the really popular i7-8700K from Intel, which is widely considered one of the best dollar per value options. But we've made a couple other recommendations in the description below, depending on your budget. But what I would say is that once you land on a CPU that you're really seriously considering, go over to Puget Systems and check out their CPU testing benchmarks. See where your CPU lands and see how much you're spending on it. It'll really give you an interesting in-depth look at what you're actually getting for the amount of money that you're spending. And next up we have the GPU, otherwise known as the graphics card. This is what drives every individual pixel from your computer to the displays so that you can actually see what you're doing on your computer. It's actually the thing that you literally plug your monitor into. It's also responsible for a lot of the video-based calculations that take place in your computer, so it makes sense that you'd need a pretty good one if you're gonna be doing some video editing. On top of that, there's a lot of effects and applications that can be accelerated or made faster by the presence of a high-quality graphics card. While CPUs had core counts to be able to measure by, GPUs have what's called a VRAM. You don't need to worry a crazy amount about VRAM, but we're gonna give you some basic guidelines to follow to help you figure out what kind of a system you'd actually need. If you're gonna be working with 1080p footage alone, you probably only need about four gigabytes of VRAM. And it goes up from there in increments of two. If you're working with 4K footage, you're probably gonna need a minimum of six gigabytes of VRAM. If you're working with 6K footage, you're gonna need eight gigabytes. And if you're working with 8K footage, you probably don't need us to help you build a system at all. There's a lot of different video cards to choose from, and it's sort of what a lot of people end up focusing on and talking about. It's sort of like the bicep of your computer. Great for showing off, great for heavy lifting, but it's really not the thing that your computer's gonna live and die on. Now, while the CPU market was Intel versus AMD, the GPU market is actually Nvidia versus AMD. And here, branding actually makes a bit more of a difference. If you're looking at Nvidia versus AMD, you're probably gonna wanna go with Nvidia on this one, as long as you're working in Premiere Pro. This is because Nvidia's got a bit better of a track record working with Premiere Pro, and it tends to just play nicer with it. To be clear, both graphics cards companies have high quality options that will do a great job working in Premiere Pro. It's not like you can't edit off of an AMD card, not at all. But to actually make a selection comes down to a performance per dollar question. It's really easy to overspend on a graphics card that's gonna be able to do way more than what your system actually needs. The question is, how hard are you gonna be pushing your system, and in what particular ways? Realistically, it's way more likely that a system bottleneck will happen at the CPU, even if you've spent a little bit more money on it, just because of the kind of tasks that are assigned to each component. But if we're gonna land on an actual recommendation, we'd suggest going with either the GTX 1050, 60, 70, or 80, or any of their higher quality TI variants. You can probably tell by the increased naming convention, as well as the amount of VRAM associated with each, that the higher you go, the better quality of a product that you're getting, but also the more money that you're spending. But we'll save you a little bit of trouble here. Even though the higher you go, the more powerful of a graphics card you're actually receiving, you're not actually gonna get all of those benefits inside of Premiere Pro specifically. Unless you're an absolute baller or really preparing for some 6K video footage to be coming your way, the 1060 or 1070 variation is really gonna be more than enough for what you're doing. Under performance tests from the guys over at Puget Systems, oh wow, this video is a lot easier because of them. There was surprisingly minimal difference between the 1070, the 1080, 1080 Ti, 2070, 2080, and 2080 Ti. But the range of prices here is staggering, almost tripling as you go up, but with little discernible difference in daily performance in Premiere Pro. So with this in mind, it looks like the tipping point right before you get those big diminishing returns is around the 1060 or the 1070. So what would we say about which card to actually choose? Again, we've listed a couple different options for different budgets in the description, but really, if you're a freelancer looking to just have a capable system for whatever happens to get thrown your way, a GTX 1060 or 1070 should be more than enough to handle what you're going for. Unless you've got a really unique situation headed your way. 
And next up we have the RAM, which I'm really excited to talk about because it's really short and really easy. The more RAM you have, the more you're giving your computer leverage to actually multitask and handle a bunch of different operations at once. Think of it like a desk. If you've got a small amount of RAM, you've got a small desk space to be able to do things with. And if you have a large desk, you have more room to breathe and get your work done. So let's work with some numbers. What's a small and large amount of RAM to work with? Well, eight gigabytes is gonna be the absolute minimum that you'll need to get Premiere Pro to work properly. Anything less than that, and it might not boot, or you're just gonna wanna break your computer out of frustration. We would suggest 16 gigabytes as an absolute base, 32 gigabytes if you're gonna be working with 4K footage, and 64 if you expect some very complicated projects to be coming your way. Don't worry too much about branding for your RAM, as long as it's what's called DDR4 memory, at least that's what you should be looking for for at the time of making this video, then it's kind of tough to make a bad decision, as long as it's from a reputable brand like Corsair, G-Skill, HyperX, etc. Just remember, more RAM equals better to a certain extent, but like all things, money can actually be the deciding factor. So try to choose a setup that makes your wallet and your video editing experience both happy. And finally, we have storage. There's two things to consider when we're talking about storage, space and speed. It's obviously better to have a lot of storage space that's really, really, really fast. We'd all love to have a bottomless pit of unlimited space to just throw video footage into and pull from whenever we feel like we need it. But alas, if you work with video footage for a living, you're probably gonna find yourself constantly filling up hard drives. For us, for example, over the course of about 200 videos, we've managed to fill up at least three to four terabytes just in video footage alone. So chances are you're gonna wanna consider how much material you expect to accumulate over the years and then have more storage space available than that. So what's the minimum? Well, you need at least eight gigabytes of storage space free in order to install and run Premiere Pro correctly. And chances are, if you have less than eight gigabytes available on your main drive, you're actually gonna get a performance boost in Premiere Pro by clearing off some excess space. Well, not so much a performance boost, but just getting rid of a bottleneck that was hurting you to begin with. But what's the optimal solution? Well, in this case, it's actually not a kind or a brand or a speed of hard drives, but more like a network or a system of them that all work together. There's a bunch of different kinds of hard drives. You've got your slow optical spinning hard drives, which can hold more space at a lower cost, but they are a little bit slower and they're more susceptible to problems over the long term. Then you have your SSDs, which stands for solid state drive. These hard drives are extremely fast, but also way more expensive for the same amount of storage space as compared to optical drives. And then finally, you have your M.2 or PCIe SSDs, which basically are solid state drives like the other one, but they just plug in a little bit differently into your computer. And you can find some increased performance benefits as a result. But the jump between regular SSDs to those are way less than the jump from optical drives to traditional SSDs. So here we're gonna show you the best way to set up your workstation hard drives for 2019. And again, we've taken our cues from the guys over at you Gotta be kidding me! Basically, in a perfect world, you'd wanna have a three-tiered system. Have an SSD for your computer's operating system, like Windows and programs, like Premiere Pro. Next, have a really fast SSD, or even an M.2 or PCIe SSD, for your project files and your actual video footage and media. This way, you're segregating the work each of these two cards do in order to make sure that they function at their fastest, which is gonna help you maintain a fast and responsive, snappy experience when doing things like scrubbing through footage and being able to see your footage playback in real time. And if your budget allows, you should also look into getting a third SSD. This one doesn't have to be as big, and you'll keep this one for just scratch data and media cache files. Basically, these are shortcut files for Premiere Pro to be able to use in order to speed up the process of displaying your video so there's like zero latency. Having an array of these set of three hard drives will make sure that at the very least, you're doing everything you can to eliminate the speed of the hard drive from being a bottleneck to whatever it is that you're actually doing. Now, the amount of storage space you'll actually need for each of these three drives is gonna be different based on your personal needs. It's really hard to say what you specifically need for your own setup, but what I'll do is I'll let you know what I use in my own personal rig, and we can use that as a sort of jumping off point. For my main hard drive that runs my operating system and all of my programs like Premiere Pro, it's a 400 gigabyte SSD. Secondly, for all my projects, I have a one terabyte SSD. For my media cache and scratch files, I only have 240 gigabytes. And that as well is a really fast SSD. But chances are once you finish a video project, and then another, and then another, your SSDs will start to fill up in terms of space. And you're gonna wanna offload those if you wanna work on any new projects. 
Probably the most widely used and affordable method to getting rid of these projects is to have a bunch of spinning hard drives which are cheaper and slower, and offload these projects once you've actually finished working on them. Chances are once you've finished a video project, you're not really looking to go back and work on it too much, it's more just there in case you need it. So these slower, cheaper spinning hard drives are a great option because you don't need a crazy amount of speed, you just need it to be somewhere. For me personally, I have eight terabytes of optical spinning hard drives just to act as a backup storage for projects that we finish just in case I ever need to go back to them. And that actually brings us to the final point of storage, always have backups. So the eight terabyte storage space that I mentioned before is actually not just eight terabytes, it's actually 16. What I have is I have a RAID setup which basically takes four four terabyte drives, which would be 16 terabytes, and then cuts it in half. This gives me a direct copy for everything that I've got on those drives, which means that even if one drive fails completely, you still have access to all of your footage, technically speaking. This RAID setup also takes advantage of the extra drives to give it a little bit of extra speed. But the main thing that I want to focus on is that technically I don't just have my footage stored in one place, it's technically stored in two places on the same computer. Hard drive failure is a real thing, and it's an absolute pain to try and get that video footage off of a failing drive. A lot of hard drive manufacturers will offer stuff like data recovery services, but that's absolutely not something that you should rely on. That's an absolute last ditch effort. The video editor's rule of thumb is to always have at least three backups of important footage. You want to have your original copies somewhere on your computer, preferably somewhat easy to access. Then you want a second copy that's stored somewhere else, like either somewhere else in an office or in a RAID setup. And then third, you want an off-site backup, which basically means that if something catastrophic was to happen, like an earthquake or a fire, you're not actually losing your video footage because your footage is actually stored physically somewhere else. For me, a fireproof safe serves as this third option. And guys, that's just been an overview of not only the system requirements, but also how you can tailor your computer to work best inside of Premiere Pro. I really hope that you guys found this video helpful. If you did, as always, we have tons of other tutorials here at MotionArray.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.